Hey, 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 what is up, you guys? What's going on? May the 4th be with you, by the way. Today is May 4th, 2021, which uh, corresponds to day number 544 for the CAD Model of the Day project. So, um, I'm going to see if I can't do something Star Wars related today. I mean, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be that way, but, you know... I like to do a lot of Star Wars related stuff when the occasion comes up. Funny thing, I've actually never seen the, the Star Wars films as an adult. I've seen them as a kid. But if you told me to to summarize a plot of the Star Wars movies, I couldn't do it. So, in in effect, I really haven't watched it, but you know, I think a lot of the you know, the way um a lot of other people get really passionate about it, I think is really cool. You know, especially all the cosplayers that are like you know, make all the costumes and stuff like that, and I think a lot of the stuff looks cool. It's like, you know, it's a world with robots in it. It's like, who can, who can not like robots, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, what's going on? Good to have you here, man. So, I think before I start, start the hunt for the, um, what the actual CAD, CAD model of the day will be, you know, let's take a look at the, uh, Discord like I always do. And, of course, if you are not part of the Discord yet, this is me personally inviting you to the Discord itself, totally free. All you need is a Discord account. You come in, quickly read the rules, and select the teapot when you're ready. And then all these channels will come up and, uh, you know, you'll be in one of the best communities out there for uh, CAD. And I really do mean that. We have a lot of uh, awesome people on board here. Um, but let's take a, a look uh, what happened since last time. So this was the penguin. We already know that. Um, just asking uh, Yaya, who just uh, commented in the uh, chat, he's been writing, or Yaya specifically, has been writing these articles about um, the certified SOLIDWORKS exams. And he's been doing an awesome job about it. You know, so um, in addition to... You know, my videos to SOLIDWORKS Lucas's videos, he's adding even more content to help you reach your goals as a, as a SOLIDWORKS CAD designer. He's, he, he, he goes through basically all the steps and what you need to know. He's been really doing an amazing, amazing job, uh, an amazing job with this. So if you haven't seen his stuff, definitely check him out. Uh, you know, look at him and his LinkedIn. I think that'll link to all of his articles. Um, it's good stuff. Yeah, I know I, I could definitely articles like these like really helped me with my um, with my SOLIDWORKS cert journey. Um, yeah, so that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, you're doing something great here. So something I did want to mention about it. Um, 
uh, he's trying to round off his um, SolidWorks articles, and uh, currently he, you know, we're looking like we we saying because I've been trying to you know help him out with um, you know getting a, like a full set of all uh, CSWP A exams. Uh, get articles for those pretty much so the mold making making exam is like the odd one out where you know i i would like to help with that but i took the old exam so whatever tips i'm gonna give is not gonna work because you know they're barely for the old exam it was so easy it was just you know go through the tools and as long as you don't misclick you'll be fine but um basically the problem is i don't know what makes the new exam so hard so if anyone has taken it and passed it or even just taken it and you can get get in touch with either yaya or myself and you know just talk about what the exam is i think that'll be pretty helpful just so you know we can i think yaya can make write his article and maybe i can make a video about it or something like that but yeah that's always been a blind spot so yeah if you're watching and you know someone who's taken mold making let me know all right, also looking here, um, Virus asking, how did you render the light's vo illumina illuminative volume? So he's talking about my CAD model today from yesterday. It's a New York uh, street light. Let you take a look at it. Um, but he's saying, how did I make these light cones? And the answer is, well, I just kind of modeled them manually. So, model the cone, set the appearance to amber light, set to transparent, and then change from shaded with edges to shaded. Um, I have SolidWorks open, don't I? Yeah, here it is. Here's the model itself. And yeah, let me turn off that perspective view. There we go. But what I think really sells the, uh, the illusion is, uh, if I change this body to its default display, it'll look something like that. So you go here, um, lights, LED, amber LED, you just click and drag, and then it looks something like this. But then you can come up here to the solid bodies folder, find out which body that is, and you can click this to make it transparent like that. Um, but you see then there's there's this black line, you know, that's, you know, uh, kind of highlighting the shape of the uh, body. Uh, to get rid of those lines, you just go to here, change from default display, which is shaded with the edges right now, and just say, you should be shaded. And with that, and if I turn perspective view back on, you know, it, it's a pretty convincing effect. The only problem is you have to have some idea of where the where the light path is going to be. Excuse me, I'm pretty thirsty. Um, but um, yeah, isometry brings up a good point. And I, if you haven't seen isometry's renders, he's he's really really awesome at doing those kinds of renders. But he says, you, you might have been able to get away with two uh, spotlights with fog enabled. So, you know, basically creating the light cone in SOLIDWORKS lights. Um, yeah, it's another awesome way to do it. I was, if this didn't work, I would have tried to hollow out that, th uh, this body. Whoops, lost it. Would have tried to hollow out this body, put a point light somewhere here, and see if I can't get, like, the, the, um the blocking behavior from the opening and just like have like a light cone kind of naturally form. But you know, you know, sometimes simple, simple is best. Can't overstate simple. Um, but yeah, let's go back. Why do I have joy to key on? Let's get rid of that. Okay. You're doing, you're one of those exit. There we go. Um, I should have cleared out more of my desktop, but we're good. Um, but yeah, we're here. Oh, uh, also here is Sebastian. How's it going, Sebastian? It's good to see you again. 
One of my core supporters, definitely. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, virus sees this and says, cool. And that's for general. I wanted to show you Yaya's new thing for, uh, you know, he's always posting in the share your work, which by the way, if you're part of the uh, virtual flat discord server, you want to, well, share your work, get eyes on it, get opinions, or, you know, just want to show off like how cool you are, you know, feel free to join, share your work and just post, post whatever, you know, new, new woodworking design. We want to see it. We think it's cool. Um, but yeah, we saw the 2048s later, but uh, uh, this is, yeah, Yaya's new animation. He did a great job with this. Man, those, um, that solid body contact is very crisp. Very good. I like this one. I like this view. Very cool. Also, I like how you did the base here. It's like a very traditional turn. Uh, base and it's like if you notice I took your advice so we'll be posting mp4 from now on yeah I think that's you, you know um, overall I think mp4 is the best way there's only really one drawback and, and is um, the only drawback is for a looping animation in th in the discord preview it doesn't loop on its own like it just plays the video and when it, the video ends it just ends so that's like the only that's the only negative thing I can think about it but in terms of being able to show off your work, it's uh, you know, it's the one that I use for right now. Um, also, great render. This doesn't look like photo views. This key shot. And also, I noticed there is an extra ball in the middle here. Was that there in the other ones? Ah, sneaky, sneaky. There is an extra ball in the center. <laughs> But I, you know, that's, that's really, really cool, man. Yeah, and of course, you know, I've seen this before, but good stuff. Uh, CAD tech help. Let's see this. I don't think anything's new in here. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to st start hunting for the model of the day to do soon. Um, yeah, and, uh, I'll also shout this out yet again. Um... We have a CAD exercise library, so if you're looking to practice your SOLIDWORKS skills with some, uh, you know, exercises from like 2D to 3D, uh, we have a couple of PDFs in the Discord. So if you just join the Discord server and, uh, yeah, help yourself to those, it's going to be really, really good. So um, I'm sure you've uh, noticed, but today is May 4th. And like I mentioned before, I like to do um, Star Wars related things when the occasion comes by. Um, so, for example, two years ago, this is actually before the CAD model, the day project existed. But this is when I was just doing like general like YouTube videos. So um, I'll post a link to this in the chat if you want. But um, honestly, one of the favorite videos I've done because it's like it's like all a joke, <laughs> you know, but um this was right around the time where George Lucas, which if you don't know, is like the, uh, the brainchild of, or, or yeah, the, the brainchild, or, or the mastermind, excuse me, of Star Wars ex itself. He owns all the, uh, the merchandising rights to the property, so he's immensely wealthy. And then this is right after he sold the Star Wars franchise to Disney for, uh, yeah, for $4.05 billion dollars. <laughs> And uh, someone made this like fake Lego Star Wars set, you know, just like a George Lucas minifig with a bunch of dollar bills. And I was like, how many dollar bills do you actually need to represent uh, $4 billion? Like, could you do it with, you know, assuming that, uh, assuming that, um, you know, each bill was just a hundred dollar bill? And it turns out like, well, you know, I won't spoil it for you, but it's quite a big chunk. It's quite bigger than that box makes it out to be. But, um, yeah, as you can see, this was one of the videos that got a lot of traction. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was very, very fun. I enjoyed it. So, I want to do something like that. Um, let's see if I can't find 
what I did last year. Go to my profile here. Hey, Alessio, when did you come in? Well, it's good to have you here at any rate. So let me see if I can't find, I mean, it should be. Let's see, if I start in November of 2019, then May 4th, 2020. So there, uh, yeah, those, this is my second Star Wars day that I'm doing model of the day. So the first one, I think is like 100, like around 170. So let's, uh, let's go back to the past here. See what I did last time because I thought I came up with something pretty clever. Definitely one of my, you, you know, one of my favorite uh, CAD models of the day. And this is actually when my screen capture stuff stopped working. This is when I was working on, la on a laptop. But, um, hold on, let me see if I can't restart that video. So, you see, I actually make a SOLIDWORKS part with the famous intro text engraved into it. And then I actually recreate the Star Wars um, intro text scrawl. Uh, it, intro text crawl. So you see, you, you, you know how those like yellow uh, words, you know, fly, you know, into the screen. That's not computer graphics. They actually had to film that. And the way they did is with like a, 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 a four foot long kind of poster and a camera really low to the ground with a special lens. So you can see the camera tracking. So in SOLIDWORKS, if you do this, you get the, you know, you get the effect perfectly. So I think that was one of the coolest things uh, I've done in the project. Definitely a very atypical use of SOLIDWORKS, but you know, a lot of things you can do with SOLIDWORKS. It's like, as Yaya famously said, we're here to break SOLIDWORKS. Well, he might not, not have said exactly that, but we like to push SOLIDWORKS to its limits, do things that it's not designed to do because it's funny. Yeah, I don't know if I'm topping that though. I also really like this one. <laughs> Too funny. Man, I feel like both, like a lot of things have yeah, both a lot of things have changed and nothing has changed since the project a lot or uh, since the project began such a long time ago. Yeah, still doing the same thing, but um, yeah, giving more people ideas for what they could try to test their model, their modeling skills with. How can we incorporate our works in a CV? That's a good question. And I think, I think what I did when I was in college and went, went to career fairs, like you have to first decide like, you know, if they, if the company's offering the position that it's like, is it like SOLIDWORKS or CAD specific? Like, do, but I gave, I, I, I used to have like a SOLIDWORKS portfolio of just some of the product projects that I did yeah, I, I mean, I think these days I would, if I were to go back in time, I think I, I, instead of calling it a SOLIDWORKS portfolio, I would have called it like a project portfolio. It's like a bunch of things that I randomly 3D printed or did for my classes that I really liked. So you could do that and just have like, you know, maybe a, you know, a brief, I don't know, five to 10 page portfolio that you, you can have in PDF form and you know, you can show like an example of your work or having something public like this, you know, because something that's really cool and you know, that's something that I have done is like, you know, when I'm, when I'm, um, you know, when I was applying for the job, I was, I was saying, yeah, you can see how I work in and, um, what my experience is just go to this web address, you know, this Instagram, and then you could see a, uh, uh, a pretty extensive list of all the cats that I've done. Um, GrabCat is another way, yeah. 
it yeah it 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 all depends because grab cat it takes a little bit uh so the, the thing is with GrabCAD, like I'm sure you want to like actually give the files. Oh, Sebastian with a great point. Maybe you could write in your CV that you have a portfolio if needed. I would definitely do that. You know, if you could say SolidWorks, you know, SolidWorks portfolio or project portfo portfolio upon request or something like that. If you don't want to waste paper. So the thing is, like, I wouldn't give the models themselves because um, I think even some of the best mo modelers, like, do some silly stuff from time to time. And it's like the thing is, like, um, there are arguments for, like, you know, when you do a model, like, should you do it this way or should you do it uh, or, or should you do it some other way? Like. I'm sure like, you know, you you guys watching and especially a lot of you have been here for most of my streams that you saw something that I did and you probably thought to yourself, I wouldn't have done it that way, but I guess that works. It's and that's the and that's the way I feel when some when I see someone model something in, in a way it's like, I wouldn't have done it that way, but I guess that works. Um I wouldn't hand the the actual files themselves. I would be like more like these are the projects that I was able to accomplish with my talent in SolidWorks that you know rubber hits the road if you need me to do something with SolidWorks like make it a, a part to 3d print make a flat pattern of sheet metal I can do that you know and I think that's the most important thing and a lot of companies won't even download files from you like that's just not even because they don't want to but that's just how they are like very large companies that are very afraid of their security they won't accept files from you and they won't, you know, go bother with GrabCAD, I don't think. Well, yeah, no, that's a great, great question. Um, yeah, let me see if I can't show you something. Yeah, hang on, hang on, my dudes. Let's see if I can find one on my old Googie drive. Hmm. Oh, I actually found a lot of old models that I did. Maybe we can look at, whoops. Yeah, hang on. I think I found something I can show you guys that isn't too cringy. Yeah, I when I was um, in the middle of college, I, so I don't think this was the one where I had when I graduated. But here, let me show you. But I had this uh, document, uh, design and SolidWorks portfolio of me those are my uh degrees or or uh my the degrees that i was working on and what i had was just like you know screenshots of some uh some of my favorite projects and i just kind of uh described it you know that's what it is more screenshots you see man i've have really come a long way Oh man, this really takes me back. Oh my god, it's been such a while since I've seen this. So you might think like this, like this uh, glider design is like very like simple, but I actually had to build this in real life, and I think I still have this model. Yeah, that's like a vacuum robot that I I was doing for a company. Oh, this was so fun! I forgot about this. Bro. Oh, Yaya is saying the image I uploaded on Discord isn't a render. Oh, it's a reference image I use. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Shaft-driven bicycle with full mechanical accumulator. 
So yeah, that was a, one of my classes where it's like, uh, you know, um, to try and design a bicycle drivetrain without a chain, pretty much. And we had a double, like, helical screw. And I think it, I, I had an animation. Let's see this. Oh my gosh, this was, this was six years ago. Oh, there's a, that's an intersection. Come on, dude. I know you were sleep deprived, but you could do better than that. Man, I've come such a long way. This is when I was a student. some of the parts yeah and then reverse engineering so you see I've been been doing that since the dawn so I've made that thing the speaker there's a gavel yeah, and this this is like some of my yeah I don't know if I would should have included this stuff but you know there are some ideas for for you and then, you know, I put sample files available upon request. Yeah, in, in retrospect, I don't know if I would have wanted to provide it, you know what I mean? And honestly, I don't know if this document, um, I don't know if this document really, like, you know, helped me all that much, but it is something that I created um, a long time ago. It does take me back, though. So yeah, people who are watching with me, thank you for sharing my uh, my experience as I go through my memories. But yeah, what am I gonna do about model of the day? Maybe I can do some like maybe Lego Star Wars thing, or maybe I can do like a lightsaber. Like I want to keep it, um, you know, keep it simple. I think. Yeah, because I know um, a lot of Star Wars models are, like, very, very complicated. Yeah, let's see. I mean, it's kind of, like, the, the most basic thing to do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> that, that's nice. Maybe the, can I catch this? No, I can't. That was, that was um, unexpected. Very cool. You can buy one on Amazon. Wow, custom lightsaber for five hundred and fourteen dollars. Leia's lightsaber, Wikipedia. Sure, let's go. I hope this portfolio of things helps in the finding jobs I created inside in Google. Yeah, no, definitely. If um, if someone does create, you know, a, a SolidWorks portfolio portfolio in the similar style that I did mine and it helps someone please let me know I mean the, the thing is like I, it's really hard to gauge the effect because like you know I did find a job at that time you know the so systems posted one lightsaber on Instagram oh I'll, I'll take a look at that but um you know I don't know if it like made or break me so it's like when I interviewed if I didn't have it would I have got, gotten hired? And if I did have it, would I have gotten hired? I don't know. I think that's what makes it kind of like difficult to advise on. But you know, it, it, I think it is, you know, it is pretty cool. And I think it should, I, I something I really enjoy, uh, something that I really liked, that I, that I liked doing, that I liked about what I did with my portfolio, Wow, I can't talk today. Um, you know, called it both design and SolidWorks because you want to emphasize the actual engineering aspect, like the actual decision making and stuff like that, as well as a CAD. You know, they're both they're both part of the process. You know, <laughs> this is cool. All right, but uh, let me see. The so. Do 
designed by uh, Carlos, so pretty cool. Yeah, they, that's very cool. That's something that would take me a lot longer than an hour, but only because, like, it's a lot of small details. Which is why, you know, I thought about doing the X-Wing or something like that. But it's just like... Yeah, I modeled a little Game Boy too. Why didn't I get on this page? <laughs> but anyway. Um... So this is like your kind of classic lightsaber. Lightsaber was patented, maybe. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Oh, that. This is cool. I. I really like this. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, that's a thing. I gotta. I gotta balance. You know, something that's cool, but also that's something that's doable in about in about an hour. during your training. I wonder if they had just have like a list of lightsabers. Cutting power. Hey, it's Uzair. What's going on? Good to see you here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I, okay, here we go. Variation, Sith, double bladed, dual phase, broad saber. Training lightsaber. There's so many kinds. <laughs> Make that teapot. What, like this one? Or. This one's cool, though. Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, today's Star Wars Day, at, at least in the, like in the US. Kylo Ren. Here, I'm gonna googie that. Oh yeah. I remember that came out. Very polarizing design. This one, this one's pretty cool. So I'll keep that in my back pocket. Yeah, I was, why is this like so small? <laughs> I'm gonna search Google for this image when I need it. Cane lightsaber. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Dark Saber. Whoa, what is this? This is cool. Hello? Let's see. This is from the Mandalorian, so the, this is like the the newer series. Yeah, and there's a couple 3D models already developed of it, it would seem, but you know, that's not gonna stop us. Well, all this stuff has been modeled before. Interesting because this person models the uh, handle 
what appears to be a perfectly circular one versus this. There's not a lot of pictures of it though, so I, I, I don't know. I, I really like the design of this one. And plus it's from the new series too, so there's that. I also like this one. We'll, we'll, we'll put that tab over there. Training one is eh, you know. I wonder if someone's made a list of, the, of like top 10 lightsabers. <laughs> Cause uh, if that's true, you know, there, I need to see it because there is, there is a lot of them. I had no idea there were so many. A lightsaber rifle? What? Wait, is it a rifle that shoots lightsabers? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Lightsaber rifle hybrid. Conjunction with a standard lightsaber. R wielded, wielded one such rifle. Into, lightsaber was properly loaded into an open slot on the top of the rifle. rifle. A lightsaber could, or the, the rifle could produce some powerful and overwhelming, oh, overwhelmingly destroyed. Oh, so I guess this is a lightsaber here. So you have a rifle, and you just load a lightsaber into it. <laughs> that's 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 kind of a cool concept. I'm not gonna lie. The curved hilt one has a lot of pictures and looks cool. Oh, here we go. I knew I. Saw oh, this is cool. I agree with you, man. Workshop sixteen sixty eight. I really like this one. I think I might do this one. What a great suggestion. And I, I just love the colors of it and the shiny metal of it. It's not too overly detailed. That is very cool. I think I'm gonna do this one. You know, that that's kind of what I was hoping for that I would, uh, you know, kind of search, that, that I could like kind of search uh, for something. And then I, I you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know it when you see it, right? Um, yeah, so Google images for more, I will happily oblige. Saber Forge. Oh, that's very cool. And then we could probably play around with some renderings. I just love the idea of just like having a lightsaber, just having it on your bed. The Sith use them. Very, this is, well. I think it's very cool. I really enjoy this. Yeah, and I do love that there's like an abundance of not only images, but images where I can see it in profile. Because that was like kind of what I was um, backing away from this one. Is because you know I've I've like reverse engineered models that are like you know in in some kind of trimetric view. It's not it's not something that's impossible for me to do, but it's it is tougher for sure. And also this one, this image is so high res as well. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this one. Yeah, I, I think the last thing I want to, well, one thing I want to do, let's save an image into my folder here. Oh, it's a WebP. Mm. Can I just be cheeky and be like, hey, you're a JPEG now. Does it open? It does, okay, cool. So. I, I accidentally taught you guys something new. If you don't want to save a WebP, 
You just rename it to JPEG and it just works apparently. All right, so I've got that saved. I'm gonna, I, I want to read a little bit of the lore. I, I, I won't uh, go past, you know, a couple minutes. So curved is a type of lightsaber used by the Jedi and the Sith during the Clone Wars. Allowed, it's allowed the lightsaber duelists to slash and lunge at their opponents with greater precision. Ooh. You know, so I can get an idea of what kind of caption I'll write. Type of melee weapon. Oh, so it does appear. Oh, that's very cool. I guess that's why there's such a high, uh, high res image of it. Hello. Oh, that's cool. You know, what if we produced like a kind of like an engineering drawing of it when we're done? I think that's I think that's gonna be cool. Thanks thanks for the super suggestion. That is awesome. So let's get this out of here. Get a new part. I don't know how big these things are, but you know we'll, we'll take an educated guess. Oh. Ah, oh, poo. Um. All right, so I guess that uh, <laughs> extension renaming technique may not may not have worked as well as I had hoped. I do have paint.net open, so I might see if that, I can use that to convert. Open, okay, file save as, uh, PNG. Okay, so I saved that same image as a PNG. So it's sketch, sketch picture. So here's a PNG and it goes in just fine. Okay, dumb question. Which way the blade, does the blade come out of? Here, right? <laughs> Hang on, let me let me look. Yeah, because I imagine you trigger that red switch with your index finger. Yeah, that's, that's what I that's what I was thinking. Workshop. Okay, so it's like a bulbous part at the end here. Oh, so, so the blade comes out of here? Hold on, let me look a little closer. Because you, you know I'm gonna get like called out if I render the blade coming out of the wrong way. <laughs> okay, I have so many of these, so let me close, you know, the ones that I'm definitely not doing. And this image is so low res. No, well, actually, no, you would see, you would see the switch here. Because that, yeah, this is the in, inner part of the curve. Yeah, I'm gonna guess it really does come out of the left side as seen in this picture because like if you projected a blade straight out, it would hit whatever this thing is. It's like a, a decorative uh, like end piece. Anyway, so the thing is, I need to scale this image. I don't know how long these are. <laughs> so a hand length is about four inches, I find, or at least my, mine is. Like if I measure my fist like that, that's about four inches. And, or a hundred millimeters, if you if you like. So you could fit another hand length there, so that's at least eight inches, and maybe a little more, so like 
10 overall, 12 overall, that's like a foot. Yeah, it doesn't really help that this thing is like curved. It's definitely not 29, that's way too big. Try and put this kind of like in the center there. So let's leave it like that for right now. And we can adjust it within the first few features if we, if we want. So how do I want to do this? I might just try and model this overall as like a sweep. That's going to have to be revolved. Probably these features can be basically wrap cuts. That's like a button. Yeah, I'm just trying to, in my head, figure out all of these. So I think, you know, this kind of like light gray-ish part, like where the tip of my pencil is, I imagine that goes all the way through, and then this shiny metal is a covering. That, that's how I imagine it. Definitely, this definitely can be a bit tough, especially that I don't have a physical example, you know, at my office here. Oh yeah, let's just try this. And then, curves like that and maybe make this a straight section. Um, so this, 375, this can have an overall, overall length, 1.1875. This needs like an angle. I'll probably put a, a sketch fillet here because you can see that, you know, definitely there's a fillet of some kind. 150? That's a little too much. 155? Honestly, 152.5. Split the difference. That's better. This has a radius of what looks to be 9. Revolve and done. Yeah. This guy gets it. Um, oh, I need to set the length with respect to the origin. That's looking pretty good. I might actually take this down to eight because I want to increase the angle and then maybe increase this to 25. So that looks like it's heading the right way, but I need to make this smaller still. Oh no, that's way too small. Yeah, it's undercutting it way too much. Actually, I think it was better before. One. And uh, let's see here. Let's get a sketch fillet. So the beam comes out of the right side with that blade theme. It comes close to contacting the blade, but clears it. Thank you, th thank you for that. I would have gotten that totally, totally wrong. And it's a good thing you're telling me this now. You, you got this just in time. Man, you're being very helpful. Thank you. So I'm going to redirect this. Apparently the trigger makes the blade vibrate for more damage. Wow, as if, as if being sliced by a beam of energy isn't enough. You gotta get vibrated in as well. Don't take that out of context, kids. Alright, um, let's do that. So now I've like a, almost adjusted the angle a little bit. R8 is too small. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. I, I agree with you, Faduk. Hope I'm saying your name right. 
Yeah, you, well, I'm glad we were basically on the same wavelength there because I changed it before reading your comment. But um, yeah, so I think now this angle's like a little bit shallower. Now the beam should clear or get pretty close to clear. If not, I can cheese it a little bit by moving this thing. Um, but yeah, you see drawing, kind of drawing that center line. Let's give this a good old save too. Curved saber. All right, so let's get a sweep with the circular profile. It's smaller. Yeah, so it's basically it's 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 undercutting it here but this is good because i plan to make this like almost like an armor like go, like that goes on top and that way when i turn on ambient occlusion you'll get these like shadows and it'll kind of look like the the same thing here this is looking pretty good i think yeah not bad just it's a start what I'll do, open up solid bodies and make that transparent. I'll show the sketch again. I'm thinking now to, to make this outer shell part. And yeah, let's grab another sketch on the front plane. Oops, I grabbed the point by accident. Okay, so I converted, right? Can maybe bring that back a little. I don't know why my lines look so weird. Two. Yeah, actually leave it like that. And what I think I can do with the new Hide. Yeah, so I have that. That goes here. Let's try another sweep, I would say. Okay. This one I can make larger. Not sure how much larger. Let's try that, just make sure that merge result is off. So we have all the benefits afforded to us by multi-body multi modeling. Now it's kind of undercutting the, the radius here, but I think I'm gonna ignore that because the top one is pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be kind of tough to nail the appearance 100%. I actually might, change take out this segment because I, I think I'll revolve that so let's turn oops, turn that into construction yeah and let me turn these off to show you what I've got so far so I just have kind of this over the original here. Let's make those transparent again. I'm gonna try and model this uh, this feature here. So I'll do that. Let's turn that like this. Sketch on the front plane. Show this sketch. Yeah, it's gonna be tough, but you know, I'm down for a challenge. Let's get that line placed, make that tangent.
Yeah, and I can't exactly trace this profile because it's like kind of off kilter. It's like at a weird angle. But, you know, that needs to be perpendicular. There's a small shelf, then like a larger shelf. Can SolidWorks reuse sketches? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can um, convert entities or you can actually literally click the same sketch again and reuse it for a different feature, provided it works. It's very convenient. The schemed relationship that I don't like. So let's do leave it like that, right? Then that's going to be like a spline. It has to meet up back with this. I might do that with like one big old spline, honestly. So what I'll do is. I'll click that face and say intersection curve, which actually gives me the a sketch entity to represent the edge. I can turn that into construction, and I'll just del delete this one. So now what I can do is get a spline. Try something like this. You know, something like that. You can see it going up, it goes down, and then meets back up with this. So let me put some numbers on this to make it fully, more fully defined. Seven five, that shelf. I want to get the overall length. That's tending to like an eighth of an inch. That's, I'll accept that. I'll make this a, a sixteenth. Oh, 69. There's the, <laughs> there's our number. But I wanted the overall length. And just to keep it, we'll put, we'll leave a 69 in there. No one will, no one will know. <laughs> Well, let's just see how that looks. If I revolve this. Oh, that's not good. Oh, because I didn't close the sketch. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I'm a dumb, dumb. Uh, all right. <laughs> let's hide that. Just got to close it up. I think that should be it. There we go. And I can just select this body to merge with. Yeah, it's beginning to look like something. So with these features, I'm gonna shell, you know, that outer tube first and then probably cut all the way through. So I'm, I imagine what you're seeing underneath here is like, the base and what, what, what I'm going to call the base. But, you know, uh, actually now that I see, well, let's not get ahead of myself here. I can either shell or I can use indent so I can use this body and use this tool to cut and then I can actually put a little bit of an offset too maybe not that much oh hey Brandon how's it going and we also got garlic here man it's a party today we got a we got a good good amount of viewership today I'm excited oh shoot oh no <laughs> I, I goofed up yeah, it looks like some kind of heat shield covering. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's, let's edit that spline. Maybe not dip down so heavily. Let's try that, maybe. 
Okay, that, <laughs> that works out a little bit better, I think. So now we should have like this, let's get a section view and maybe just bring it a little forward so we can see. Yeah, this is definitely one of those models where I'm literally kind of just making up the steps as I go. So if I'm going a little slow, you'll have to forgive me, but you know, that's the beauty of this stuff. You get to uh, really like figure it out as you, uh, as you go. I think it's fun. Uh, I guess section view can't render transparencies, but you know, imagine something like that. Um, so this part here, well, since I did this with indent, I really should have done this feature before. So let me roll back. We can do that. Here, let me name these bodies because I'm definitely going to mix it up at some point. So, revolve, rename, let's call this the outer, call this the inner for right now, so I don't goof that up. So we, the outer body is showing, which is good. Let's grab another sketch on the front plane. That looks... Something like this. Oh, what am I doing? You know, I just figured out a much easier way. Let's try this again. Let's do that, right? Make sure that this and this are together. One, four, three, seven, five. And let's give them a distance. Right, seven, five, something like that. Um, overall height, and I'll be sure to do it from uh, line to line rather than just picking a leg. Seven five like that. Then I should be able to apply a sketch fillet. Oh, it's too big. Two five. I think that might be too big still. Yeah. Try ninety. There we go. Yeah, I don't have it perfectly centered, so it just can be a little tough. I think that'll work. Like that. And as for this little part, you know, what I can do is, you know, something like this, and then turn this into construction. Now that should make a new, new thing. Oops. Oops. I need to bump up the size just a little bit. There we go, two ticks. So I got something like that. I'm going to revolve about this. Make sure it merges only with the outer. Like that, and now when it indents, there you go. It's still hollow on the inside. So I noticed that. Okay, let's hide. These grippy sections. I don't think I should be overthinking this as much as I am right now. But here we are. And I'm just going to assume that this top triangle is connected to the rest of the outer. And then this one is just kind of separate. Because I think once I do that, you know, I can... Uh, kind of get this pattern. I might just do it like a deboss and do like a, you know, SolidWorks appearance just to, you know, save a bit of effort here. Or alternatively, I could work on like the vent thingies. Yeah, 
That's going to be really interesting, I think. How do I want to do this? I have an idea. Show the sketch. Show the outer. All right, guys, I, I, I have an idea. So let's uh, take the outer, make that transparent so I can see. Front plane, sketch. Let's get a straight slot. It looks like that almost goes to the center line, but what I think I want to do here is snap that to, so this point down here is the center point of this arc. If you're wondering where that came from. Came with the Happy Meal, you could say. So this definitely needs to be um, a bit smaller. Got a package delivered, that's good news. Uh, 90 looks perfect. You know, I might even say this should be tangent with the center line. All that's left should be left as an angle. So I can click the line and click its endpoint, and then click an arrow. I'm going to give that three and three quarters degrees. So we get something like this, right? So how many are there? There are seven of these great great. So maybe it's a Jeep. <laughs> Made by Jeep. Cause it because it kinda like I imagine once you turn it on its side, it will look like a Jeep um grill. <laughs> kind of kind of a funny thought. But let's take our new sketch here and do an extrude cut through all both and only let it apply to the outer. So you get something like that. Additionally, we'll get a circular pattern. The direction will be the this arc, or not. Doesn't like the arc. Okay, um, plan B. We're gonna get an axis first. We're gonna pick the center point and the front plane. I don't know if you can see that yellow preview. Well, I mean, why don't I just you know, hit okay. Now, now you can see it. So it's an axis that is perpendicular to the front plane and going through the center point of this arc. And now I should be able to use that with a circular pattern direction one, axis one, the features will be the cuts. We're gonna go for instant spacing the other way. There's seven of them. Just kind of bring, oh, that looks pretty good. I might, what if I say three? Three's too much, two. Two and a quarter. No, even that's too much. Two point that. I think that looks pretty good. And then you could see how it looks with the, uh, with the ambient occlusion. So far, so good. Am I right? Um, what now? Let's get rid of the inner again. And turn this into transparent again. I can start working on this here. There, there, there looks like it's a, there's another feature here, but I might have to ignore it. I don't see it all, all that well, don't know what that is, but you can see like the metal doesn't reach all the way. So there's something here, I think. Yeah, let's not overthink this. But what I think I should do. Um, actually, let's get intersection curves like that. Because the important thing is that we do need to make sure that this cuts basically all the way. Be careful, I don't want to snap on into anything unintentional. And that looks like the inner thickness. Let's try that. 
So let me get the intersection curve of that as well. Um, delete these two extras. I should be able to just close this off with a line and say make parallel. And then give this sort of thickness. So it's, it looks like it's on a, oh gosh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm not, I re, what I really should be doing. Let me get rid of that. Let's try something like that. And then this, yeah, that, that, that is very loosey goosey. So I will take that and that, oop, hitting win key instead of, uh, instead of control, say pierce. And at that point, it, it's fully defined and unexpectedly so. Like I was expecting to be able to um, uh, put a dimension there, but the reason it won't is because of this. This is the intersection curve that I use for the uh, uh, for the for the original um, this face here. So it wants to keep that consistent. So I can make vertical. Or do I want that? Let me try with a thickness, because I don't know if this should cut all the way through the thickness. You know what I mean? Let's see what result we get, you know? So, you know, let's go through extrude cut. Through all both. Only select the outer. And I do expect to have more than one body. So this is good. So it looks like that. Yeah, it has a little thin section here. So, you know, maybe I will make it all the way. Yeah, I should have just left it as is, but you know, this is, this is a show about learning. Oh, it fails. Interesting. Oh, yeah, that's right. It actually has to go past. Yeah. Because it's trying to create like a basically a knife edge there. And we don't want that. So undo that. So I guess I was right in the first place. Driven. Using 3D sketch in a design is bad. I mean, the professional field, I mean, in the professional field as a mechanical designer, I wouldn't say it's bad per se. It's just tricky and can take a lot of effort to, uh, to uh, fully define uh, a 3D sketch. I think when you use a 3D sketch, it needs to be supported by I'm gonna leave it the way it was before. It needs to be supported by uh, 2D sketches to make it easier. So as an example, you know, uh, we'll take a detour from this. We'll take a quick break. It's the, the one of the CAD models of the day that I did just just a couple days ago. Actually, was this table. You might have you might have seen it, but it actually uses uh, a 3D sketch for you know one set of the legs. So if I go kind of back like that and then let's go for flat tree let's show our sketches so the 3d sketch is um, let's take a look at it so you can see I have a 3d sketch going from I don't know if you can see that Pentagon it's, okay there's two Pentagons let me see if I can change the color of that there we go let's get blue bro you're not gonna keep my color. 
What if I do line format? So that color blue. Nothing. Great. Oops. I asked because it's not a very used command, but I think it's useful in cert certain occasions. I think so too. Let's just remove all part appearances. Okay. So you see that there are these pentagons here. So I put those pentagons there before and basically I snap one edge of the 3D sketch to it. Then I come down to this point basically and I actually filleted after using a sketch fillet and then I uh, changed the midpoint of the fillet to just touch that point again and then it comes back over there. So to get this kind of complicated um, path, I, th I actually think 3D sketch is the easiest way but it needs support from these 2D sketches. So what I don't recommend doing is just using a 3D sketch all by itself and then trying to say, oh, it's on plane with this, um, four inches away from the origin, 10 inches down, because that's just gonna cause a lot of headaches for you. So my recommendation, you know, uh, have a plan of what you want to have your 3D sketch and then put supporting geometry. So we don't want that. So, you know, started with this pentagon down here and then this one up here. So that's just using with the, with the polygon tool, right? And then with a 3D sketch, it makes it very trivial. Like I'll make another one now, even 3D sketch. You just get your line, you know, point, 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 perfectly easy. And so it makes it a lot more easy to deal with. So just, w just by picking those, it's fully defined. I don't have to wrestle with dimensions in, in, in three dimensions. Um, what's also really cool is um, if I go to this sketch, there's actually an angle there and I was using that to play around with. Oops. Let's just get this. If I click on uh, this sketch, come on, dude, you want to show me that angle? There we go. Here, watch this. If I play around with this and maybe set that to 10, it actually changes the character of how, of how those things come together. So the, the sketch rotates, changes the 3D uh, sketch because it's um, attached to there, but it makes it like really trivial. Oops. Makes it really trivial to see stuff like this without having to change like a, a bunch of dimensions in like a 3D sketch by itself. So the moral of the story here is that 3D sketches are more than okay. Um, I think they just need to be supported by uh, 2D sketches or other kinds of reference geometry because a uh, freehand 3D sketching, like 3D sketching where you like, you know, do this and then you get a line and you post out here, you know, like this. I think this is very challenging. And then you want to change directions, you got to hit tab, you, you know, you get something squiggly like this. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's like intuitively I thought that point was closer to the origin, but nope, it's like way up here. And then I have to do like all sorts of stuff and even something as simple as this, you know, completely freehand 3D sketch. It's like very, very much a pain to do in my opinion. But yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, you shouldn't, um, I don't think there's really any command that is like completely, completely taboo. Even, even a fully defined sketch. You know, Yayo will probably argue with me on that, but you know, that's what, that's what makes it fun. It's like, it, there, there are like tools that are misused, but there are not any bad tools is, is, is what I guess I'm saying about that. But yeah, back to this. Now, what shall I do? 
Yeah, there's that's kind of like a thin edge, but I'm just gonna leave it. Honestly, it's like kind of all the day. You know, supposed to be relaxed. You know what I will do? We'll sketch on the front plane again. Let's see if I can't offset these entities. Quarter of an inch, maybe a little more. Do I want to match up this line or this line? That is the question. No, isn't it? Yeah. And then additionally, I can do the same thing with this. Offset, but going the other way. Like that. And then what I can do is, what can I do? A, a sketch fillet is what I can do. A lot of sketch fillets in this model. Like that. Because then what I can do with that is I can take that sketch and let me show these again. Sorry, let me do a bit of housekeeping here. Clean up some of the stuff. Um, all right, we'll take this sketch, which is angry for some reason. Huh, interesting. The offset entities failed. Hmm, not sure what happened there. I'll try it one more time. Why is that still there? Hello? Okay, so that's just an artifact, I guess. The sketch is scuffed. Offset. It's fine right now. And it still comes out errored, so I'm just going to ignore it for the time being. So I did a split line. And I want to display edges as phantom. So there's that that I created. What I can do is offset both of these surfaces. Or both of those faces to make surfaces and I might just do a bit of a thicken on them and uncheck merge result so you got something like that going on I'd say this is go coming out well so far other than our random like little doodad that doesn't want to offset. Maybe it's trying to offset the, the silhouette entity and that's why it's upset. But you know, it's not something I'm going to investigate right now. So let me hide all bodies. So that looks rounded off. So I could probably take care of that. Oh, shoot. Whoosh. You know, we got, you, you know, uh, Moose is in the chat when we, uh, when we get those whooshes. All right, I'm going to do something that's going to break my part. It's okay. I want to make this rounded like that, but that means cut extrude two is going to have issues with it. Yeah, because Pierce is going to fail. So instead, I will say make coincident with that uh, top silhouette edge. Intersection curve to bring this curve in. And I could probably say make tangent. There we go. Sketch repaired. 
Don't forget to get rid of the, the little extra. Okay. So now, with all of these, not bad. We're getting somewhere. So with the inner, I'm gonna reuse a, a sketch again. So let's show that. I'm gonna start a new sketch. Converted that entity and I can just yank the points off if I want to. Overall length of one and a quarter. Let's see. These are these uh, dimensions are turning out kind of nice. Overall one half. Yeah, that works for me. And now another sweep. Sweep is very underrated because technically you could do the geometry that I'm making with. Uh, you know, with a boss extrude. So someone would look at that and say, why wouldn't you do that with a boss extrude? It's like, well, to do it with a boss extrude, you gotta set up a plane first. And that can be kind of annoying. But if you can just get um, a straight line, you can kind of get that um, geometry a lot easier in my opinion. Especially if it's, a, if it's a circular profile because then the profile is just built in to the tool um, if you have SOLIDWORKS 2016 plus. So I think it's very effective. So I might make it like that and then indent this, do it like that and set that to zero, there we go, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, it's looking Looking pretty bland, but only because we don't have any uh, colors yet. I might fill it these things. Yeah, let's say a 30 second. Yeah, and those are separate bodies, so I gotta do them separately. Like that. I'm gonna work on this part next here. I'm trying to think, is that, yeah, that's an indent, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so we can just do that with a revolve. It's gonna be easy, I think, I hope. Um, but it's a revolve with an offset axis. You know, something like that, right? Parallel. And I could define the offset right here, like that. Define the overall length of this, 375, like that. Yeah, I could have done this with a three point rectangle, but I'll just do it like this. There we go. Does that have any? No, that needs a. That needs parallelism to that. And what I can do now. Yet more sketch fillets. Can be smaller than that. <clears throat> Additionally, let's get some circles, like here, and here, we want the circles, 
to be equal to each other. And I might draw a couple, drop a couple of center lines down to the midpoint of this if I can find it. Say that these are also equal. Just gonna, yeah, it's not perfectly lining up, but I'm gonna split the difference. Um, but the overall diameter of that, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. Maybe just a little more. That looks good. And define an overall width from each other. So something like that. But then we go in with our trim entities. Do something like that. So I really like this um, keep trim and entities as construction geometry. Um, because any... Um, when it converts into construction, it replaces a lot of the uh, relations that would have been otherwise destroyed and it would have to define it yet again. So it's pretty helpful. We have a lot of multi-bodies, but that's cool. So you see this thing is not quite reaching here. Um, one thing I could try and do to fix that is like, you see um, it perfectly matches here, but it undershoots here. That means that the offset is not enough. So I could try like that. Hello? Oh, I gotta exit. There we go, perfect. Yeah, like I, I hope you're also, you guys are also getting tips about like not only SolidWorks stuff, but also about general geometry because the better you are with geometry, the the more powerful you will be in SolidWorks, my young Padawans. Okay, that was a little cringy, but <laughs> we'll roll with it. We're actually not that far away from um, having this done because we have this feature. That's like a boss extrude. This feature, which is a boss extrude, we have this button, which could be a boss extrude, and this little thingy boss extrude and then this and that would be the blade itself so it's just like a handful of boss extrudes blueprints are very useful yeah I totally agree and you know that I, not only do I really like the design of this um, uh, of this uh, uh, lightsaber but I just love that it has like a plan view like this it makes it so much easier yeah, shout out to uh, Workshop1668, by the way. He was early, here earlier in the chat, you know, for making such a great, um, uh, su uh, such a great suggestion. Let's put it, let's put it that way. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm thinking of taking a bio break, actually. I drank a lot of soda just there. Still here, man. No problem. Yeah, you're 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 the real MVP. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna take a quick two-minute break. I'm gonna use the restroom, and I'll be right back. Oh, hang on. You got your CSWA, bro. That's awesome. Thanks to me. Well, I mean, you're the one who did it, so. Yeah, so, you know, super congratulations to Workshop over there. You know, if you have some of you, some, some of the stuff you like to do, you know, I'd like to, like to see some of it. But, you know, I'll, I'll look at that when I come back. I'll be right back.
All right, guys, I'm back. <laughs> but yeah, what I wanted to say is workshop, you did that on your own. You, you, you're the one who passed that. So, you know, super congratulations to you for, you know, passing the CSWA there. I'm glad I was able to help a, a, a little bit, but you know, that's, that's awesome, dude. I'm gonna hit this part with a fillet. Patrick's saying, button, I think this is a real picture and real golden screws. Yeah, maybe that is a round head screw. Yeah, it's hard to tell what things are. You know, especially that, you know, of course, a lot of these are designed to be props, so you don't know exactly what's going on. Let's do that. I got a fillet there. Can't tell if it's like a weld or something. Um, but let's get this next thing done, which I can think I can do by front plane. Um, and I want a three point corner rectangle. One, two, three. And that will stay parallel to this. Size is looking pretty good. So that trigger vibration thing was a final fantasy gun blade I got mixed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, you're getting cut open with with a, uh, or, or, or <laughs> you're getting sliced by a, a beam of energy. I think the vibration's a, a bit overkill, but you know, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it existed. It's like, if you look at, if you think about like real weapons, like in the military, a lot of that stuff is like way overkill. All right, so we got this. That's a little too much. Yeah, there we go. And let's get an offset value here. Like that. And let's uh, get some fillets. And I, of course, do this in multi-body style that I like doing. I, I can't tell how thick this thing is. I have no clue. So I'm just going to make it half an inch as just a guess. And I can probably put a small round on it, too. There we go. And I'll take care of fitting it a little bit later. The next thing I'll do is kind of trace that out, right? Yeah, what I think I can do actually, again with a three point corner rectangle Maybe start here, go down here, over like that. Parallel. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Um, let's get overall height. So it's like I'm kind of drawing the envelope, and that'll help me... Uh, Fully define some stuff. 1.4375. Yeah. And an offset from maybe that vertex. And what I can say is make those into construction. So that way, I can just do this. Let's get a tangent arc into maybe another tangent arc. 
into maybe yet a third tangent arc back into here and close up the shape tangent. Uh, need to make this leg a bit shorter. Yeah, this, I'm gonna lock the size of this because I kind of like that. And then say that this and that are tangent. So that should make this easier to deal with. There we go. Hey, we're almost there. 1.2, 2, 5. That's too much. Too little. That's right. There we go. Got something like that. Mid plane. On check. It's going to be the trigger. Maybe I should do something from Final Fantasy 2. I haven't played any of the games, but that, that hasn't stopped me from uh, actually making a lot of video game related models. They're very fun to do. So this... I'm thinking what it can do. Wow, oh, this is turning out, I would say. So I think I'm gonna do, put another sketch down. Grab, oh, hello? No, I want a center circle. There we go. Something like that. Six, two, five. Just want to stick out a little bit. There we go. And we can fill it. There you go. That looks pretty good. Didn't even sketch that one out. Um, Very close. Sorry, I was just thinking about stuff. So I wouldn't overthink this, this, you know, brass ish piece too much. Oh, yeah, I need a plane. And it's really annoying that I do have like a rebuild error. Oh, yeah, that's driven, of course. And give an overall length to this. Oh, I goofed it. No, that really needs to be 1.1. And I think it's just missing an overall offset. Perhaps from this, let's grab the origin. 
375. Good, good. Let's grab that. Something like that. And then fill it. Oh, that's goofy. Stop it. There we go. Something like that. So that it blends in a little bit better. So the thing is just to make sure that this actually clears the blade. I think I have to make the blade first. Workshop, what's your favorite color? What, uh, what color should I make the blade? I guess is another way to phrase that question. I'll let you pick since you came up with the idea. In the meantime, I need to find out how long blades are. Yeah, this is light blue, maybe? I think that's a great choice. You know, if you look at my channel icon, you can tell that I also like light blue. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think, yeah, like a, like a cyan or something like that. That would be cool. Should probably be red though. Yeah. And what is cool about the CAD model of the day project is that you could really take this in, you know, whatever direction you want. All right, so, oops, it's the wrong thing. Someone make this, made this exact lightsaber on GrabCAD. Oh, I'm not at all surprised. You know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the CAD modelers are just huge Star Wars fans. So I'm not surprised if basically every CADable object in the Star Wars universe has been CADed already. <laughs> you know, how long are lightsaber blades cannon? <laughs> About three feet. <laughs> Metal hill. Okay. You know, I'll buy that. If anyone disagrees, just let me know. But I... I... So do something like that, and yeah, you can see that if I draw, it, it, yeah, if I sketch the, uh, yeah, if I, if I sketch this piece exactly as is, it's going to contact the blade. So this is exactly what I wanted to see. This is perfectly fixable, though. So, uh, Revolve 4, I'll rename that to Blade and set to transparent. Yeah, so that's how much overlap we've got. So in order How do I want to do this? Ideas, ideas. Yeah, there should be a centimeter or so of space. I want to see if I can show you guys something really cool. That I'm just trying to make a a plan. All right. Yeah. So it'll probably be off model a little bit, but that's okay. You know, we had to have fun in this channel. So what I'm gonna do with this. I'm going to draw, or I'm going to sketch B 
basically trace this exactly as is. Because that's probably going to have to be a spline. I'm probably going to need like a line over here like that. And let's get our spline. So here, and here, and maybe like there. That looks good. We need to adjust. Something like that. So let's get to fully defining this. Make that nine. One, four, three, seven. Oop. Five. Yada, yada, yada. Um. I'll do that just to help us a little bit. Um, should, yeah. You, you notice I'm note. Uh, I'm ignoring this um, this fillet. I'll take care of that later in this sketch. Perpendicular, and maybe coincident to the end. That'll that'll help us. So here to here. So if I, for example, I might be goofing myself up here. So overall length, or there's horizontal length. Well, actually, I think with my technique, it's not gonna really matter. So watch this. I'm going to search for make block. And I'm gonna turn all of these into a block. Rebuild. So now I should, oh, let me get back into the sketch. And now this should move as like one like giant unit. So now what I think it can do Play my cards right. Put another center line, perpendicular, and give that a length again. I should be able to just rotate it. Something like that. I know that's I know that's touching, but I think that'll be sufficient for you know a model that we might just render. So basically, by turning it into a block, and then I basically define like a rotation point, I was able to just like basically hinge that thing over, and then I can continue sketching even like this. Um, Let's grab this and that. Perpen uh, not perpendicular, parallel. Maybe turn that into construction, make that tangent. Something like this. Bring that over here. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Or actually, I could just bring that you know, snap it to this edge. I don't think that's particularly the greatest idea, but you know, I think we'll I think we'll live. So I have this line now. I just need to close this up, and I don't want to make a knife edge. Can I convert this? I can. Something like that. I just don't want it to stick out. 
snow. That. I think the final thing. Two, five. And I think that should make an entire... An entire loop. So let's see what Boss Extrude has to say about it. Okay, so it's bringing out the thin feature. It's not good. Let me go back. All right, I need to hide this sketch. See what we've got. Now let's bring out the repair sketch. Is there any gaps? Hello? Yeah, sometimes it's kind of rare that I see a sketch do that. So it's, I guess, a hybrid block, regular sketch entity kind of deal is not appreciated by SOLIDWORKS. I wonder if I could nest blocks. That's a question. Yeah, because, you know, this is a block connecting with regular sketch geometry. If I say make block yet again, can I put a block within a block? And appears the answer is yes, I can nest blocks. Kind of ruins a sketch though. No, it's still doing the same thing though. So that's, that's not the solution. What I might do honestly is another sketch. And let's just select all these en entities and convert them. I'll be able to We'll be able to run a uh, repair sketch a little bit easier without, you know, all those little like construction lines in the way. So repair sketch, I don't see anything going on. Let's try that. Yeah, now, and now you see, I didn't change anything, I just convert. Start a new sketch and converted it, and now it now it works just the way I want it to. We'll un uncheck the merge result, and let's just get some small fillets in here. Why not? And I wonder if I'll be able to, can I say like all or internal feature? Okay. Got something like that. <clears throat> and I think that's basically all the bodies I need. So I think now is just to set colors and stuff like that. This is pretty cool though. Let's hide. So to turn everything back. Um, all right, I, I, I'm gonna get the, yeah, I have this in my paint.net. I'm gonna put it on my other screen here. And I'll start by making this thing like stainless steel to get the shiny parts. So now there is some like textured rubber and I'll just apply those to the bodies so this grip there you go I don't like the way that looks actually I'd rather do plastic what is this textured It does have like a diamond tread, which I could definitely add. Yeah, let's see if I can't just do that. Make sure, yeah, real view is on. See if we can't go to advanced surface finish. Neural. 
mapping and just make them small. That looks good, better, much better. So this is stainless. So this is like kind of like a beige, like anodized like coat. So let me see if I can't get like a, a color value for that. Um, let's put, uh, let's get metal steel, matte steel like this, and then edit the matte steel to have the bit of color in there, which appears to be 153. 151, I'll leave it at 158, but 150 goes to 140. So I guess making it a little bit more on the yellow side. Might be too yellow. Oh, I actually just noticed there's like another button thing here. Oh man, okay. Well that's, I mean, it's not gonna be bad to do. Oh, and actually I need to, um, well, I mean, I guess I could keep applying appearances. It's actually making it easier to look at instead of just gray on gray on gray on gray. That can be red. So this is shiny. We'll leave that as is. There's, there's going to be a brass involved. Give the brass to that. Also... This thing's like, ah. Polished brass looks so ugly. I think I might change to brushed, actually. There we go. That's much better. Just taking care of little details as I see them. Just getting some small fillets. Oops. Get rid of that. All right. We're getting somewhere. I think this thing will look cool as like a brush steel. Give it more texture. All right, so um, let's really quickly, um, I need a reference point, hang on. Point, this, perfect. Front plane. It does look a little bit bigger than this one. Not as big as I put it, so maybe yeah, 375. Extrude. Yeah, it needs to. Yeah, I'm not sure of the overall radius. I'm gonna have to test. There we go. Oops. A little more. There we go. Just like that. Uh, points vary in the way. Okay. I'm gonna bring the 
this over here. This is looking really cool. All right, so we need some indents. So for, yeah, we're gonna need some indents. Quite the handful, actually. Cut this and that. So it's just cutting all those. So that, cut this. There you go, so now that sits there perfectly. Um, now what? Indent this, cut this and that. Not bad. Oh, I can actually go back here and also select this to go in. Yeah, and indent four, I need to add this. I forgot. I didn't like it. Oh, I goofed it. Target body is still this. Tool body region is that. There we go. All right, we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. That nickel chrome finish. Yeah, like it's, honestly, I try and avoid this shiny whenever I can. Cause the shiny is just like, it gets too many like lines on it. But like this real, this brushed always, yeah, the brush always um, appeases me. So now what we need to do, it's gonna look so cool. I tell you what, um, let's play around with the scene a little bit. If, so I still have to set the, the color of this. I'm gonna do it in light blue in honor of uh, Workshop 1660A here. And to celebrate his you know, success with getting the A, you know, it's really good. Uh, X, Y, so that should flip it on its side. So it's, I'm, I'm gonna kind of render it like it's on a, like on a table or on the floor or something like that. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's do offset to geometry. There we go. Can do it something like this. I'm probably gonna do it like a zoomed in view. So to get us started here, I'm gonna go to our LED, maybe go to our neon tube. What do we got? Yeah, let's go to neon tube. Let's start with white actually. And then I can just adjust the color from here. Make that cyan. Oh, that's gonna, that's gonna be really cool. Maybe make it a little lighter, so it's not so violently cyan. Oh, I actually should. Spaceballs was a good Star Wars spoof movie. That's another one I haven't seen yet, but that's, um, I've heard it's really, really funny though, so. You know, at least from what my friends told me, t tell me, um, they, they seem to agree with you, Moose. Yeah, it's like the guy with, like, the giant, like, Darth Vader helmet. Yeah, there's a lot of movies I gotta get around to watching, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it, and I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you, tell you guys about it. And, and I'll probably end up modeling, you know, whenever I see like a cool movie, you know, um, you know, I tend to like, that's when I get the ideas like, oh, that I should 3D model that. Um, perspective, oops, shoot. I meant to turn that on, but modify. Maybe let's go a more extreme so I can fit more of the blade. 
Too bad they didn't do a sequel. Spaceballs 3 is a search for Spaceballs 2. Oh my god, what a meme. That's that's amazing. Oh, shoot. Oh man, I really goofed that up. Alright, let's try that again. So overall, I like this view, so let me um, go here and say new view. Just call it view 1, just so I can come back to it. Because I need to zoom in and do that, redo that indent. I accidentally, um, accidentally undid it. Let's go back to this view. Let's get photo view 360. Yeah, this is turning out to be a longer stream than I expected, but you know, this what makes it fun. Um, so photo views on. And we're coming to the end here. So I see a floor there. Yeah, part of me actually wants to change carbon steel. Just make that like a lot lighter. Now you must 3D print it. This would be, th this would honestly be a very cool 3D print. Uh, set some options. So I don't know why it lost my custom size. Yeah, 1024, sure. That's fine. That's fine. Um, frame. I think I'm probably going to do two renders, like one where it's like really zooming in all in all of the work and one of the overall. So let's do that. Let's get the scene. Photo through 360 lighting. Let's turn down the background brightness so we can see this thing start to glow. Rendering brightness will also be diminished. What if I just turn that to zero? That looks kind of cool. You know what? I'm thinking, I wonder if Bloom would help with like, kind of like scene reflectivity. What if I turn that? Well, that helps with like the overall, like, you know, seeing it, you know. So I think I'll just set that to kind of around what it was, rendering brightness as well. The blade is what I'm thinking we can make look better. But I think I'll, you know, do like a dark kind of rendering. I think that looks, that looks very cool. But what I will do, I, don't, I hope this won't take too long, but what if I turn on Bloom? Oh, God. I actually do not recall what Bloom set point does. I might have to look that up. Bloom set point.
identifies the level of brightness or emissiveness to which bloom effect is applied. Decreasing the percentage applies the effect to more items. Increasing it applies the effect to fewer items. I think that's what I want. But it says it's a percentage, but I'm at 160. And it just lets me go. Bloom extent. Sense the distance that the bloom radiates from the source. I think we're just gonna have to um, we're just gonna have to try it honestly and and adjust. This is really my first time working with Bloom. Let's go for a final render. See what that does. Yeah, I just I just kind of cranked them up a little bit. Oh, my, my, my computer is, I might drop some frames here for, for the stream. Well, the nice thing is that there's not much of a background, so there sh it, it shouldn't really uh, take that long on the background portions of it. Fans kicking in, you can hear that? <laughs> so this looks very cool, but still not what I expected. I was expecting like more of a stronger bloom from the... Well, another thing we can try before I mess around with those settings is I can just go to this, go to illumination, and luminous intensity and just really crank this up. How high can this, oh, I guess 100 is the, uh... oh my god, it's like white in here. That might be too much, but let's see what the final render says about it. We can, we can do a couple. I got time. Yeah, I think that's going to be too intense. Giving my computer a workout. How the loom reflects off the metal room it is cool dip, though, but it loses the cut color. Yeah, that, I, 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 I saw that too, and I agree with you. I think it's very cool. Yeah, this, this is not the effect that I wanted. All right, so I got to change that back. You, see, you and I are learning together. So let's bring this back, and I think it was at one. So illumination, yeah, that's way overdone. There we go. How high can I set this? 1,000? Well, let's see, it lets me keep going further. Bloom extent. Oh, so it maxes out at a hundred. <laughs> I'm glad my my um, my method is just set things to max to see what it does. So I think that's twelve hundred set point and one hundred extent. So I'm reading here. Bloom extent sets the distance of bloom radiates. So I do want that to max out because like a, a lightsaber is like, it is like very midi. Yeah, the set point, I think I might be saying setting way too high. It says it identifies a level of brightness or emissiveness. Decreasing the percentage. Oh, it's, a, it's like a threshold. I, yeah, then that's set way too high. I understand, I think. So instead of that, let's try 100 and rerun the render. Let 
Just checking a message, guys. That red could stand to be more red. That's not that big of a deal. Let's see what, what happens here. So it's that versus... I don't really see a difference. I'm gonna set that to 10 and run again. That, that one property. This. Did I apply? Make, let me make sure and go back. Yeah, so it's set to 10. Final render. Yeah, Bloom's, Bloom on visualize as radius, intensity, and threshold. Yeah, I wish I had visualize. Yeah, I just have photo view 360, so, you know, it is what it is. Another thing I can do is support with a little bit of Photoshop, but, you know, this is kind of something I've been wondering about is like, Yeah, like about Bloom itself. Oh, hello. There we go. Now it's doing a thing. So I think it's going way too far. So that's the, uh, the extent. If I lower the extent to maybe 10, go for the final render. Yeah, and I, and I don't think this is, uh, I don't think this is like really um, Photo View 360's fault. I know like Visualize is obviously, it is more powerful than Photo View 360, but the reason I'm not getting the results I want is because I'm just not experienced with, you know, setting bloom. So it's more of like a user thing. That's okay, we're, we're learning together. And I need to see if I can get my hands on SolidWorks Visualize though. And it didn't appear until the very end. So I was like looking at this and I was like, oh, that's kind of sad. And then, <laughs> whoosh, what the? Okay, so this is the threshold. So that means um, the threshold is set too low. But that looks awesome though. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I just need to set the set point higher so that the handle isn't glowing. We're getting somewhere, guys. Settings. So the set point, let's maybe put that to 50. It's just sad that you can't see it in preview, really. You have to wait till the final render. And at least, you know, this is the very first time I'm doing this. Like now that I know like what reasonable values are, I should be able to find, like hone in on this a lot faster in the future too. I'm just like intently staring at this. Ah, I think we just have to set it a little higher or maybe double. What happens? I'm thinking 75 this time. And maybe bring the radius just down just a little bit. Shouldn't be changing two variables at once, but 
I like to live dangerously. So bloom extent, set that a little bit lower. Bloom set point, maybe up that to like 75 or something. I put it at 77, but that's okay. Now this is gonna turn out to be like a three hour stream, but you know, something that I, I really enjoy doing this. So it's like, I have to do cattle all the day anyway, right? But uh, no, it's really fun to do it with an audience, I found. By the way, if you like the music you're hearing, this is uh, Cordio, it's my good friend. You know, his band camp is in the uh, description, and I find his music super great for, like, focusing and studying. And he actually released some new, um, some new music. I think it's, like, uh, beats to, like, study to. I think, I think we got it, guys. I really like this. So let's do, I love that. It's like the handle is glowing a little bit. I mean, if anything, I kind of want to put the radius back up, but I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to go uh, for the next view here. Oops. Fit. Try and render that, you know, with the settings we've got. It's one of those things like, you, you know, what I got to keep re reminding myself with CAD model of the day is, um, you know, I can uh, spend hours and hours to chase perfection that I'll never really get. Or, you know, I could just do the basic stuff to the best of my abilities and, you know, keep everyone sane. Yes, yes, that's what I want. That was pretty quick, so... You know, I'll do one more. I promise. So the set point is like right on the money, I think. But bloom extent, what if I just put it to 15? So that was more than it was uh, before. Um, there we go. That's it. I think I think this is the chef's kiss, you know, kind of perfection I was looking for. So we'll save that into this. I'll call this number two. And actually, let me save this view for future reference. Save to and now let's switch back to one. Where's my preview window, dog? I think I'm going to do one final render with the with the bloom bloom uh, extent at 15 with the previous view. And if it looks good, we'll call it a day, we'll call it a stream. It looks like people are turning in for the night. It's, you know, nine, almost 10 o'clock. Or, yeah, it, it, it's almost, uh, I guess, 2200 hours for people who use 24 hour time over in the United States and the East Coast.
Yep, got to put on, uh, on Insta. I'll probably do that off stream, though. Yeah, I love it. I might rotate it 180 degrees, but I'll do that in, um, in paint.net. Hey, Melectrica, you made it. You're, you're just in time. I was about to, uh, yeah, I was about to, uh, sign off for the day, but you get to see the final, final results. You're here for the part that counts. So, of course, today's Star Wars Day, as I'm sure you know. So, my buddy uh, Workshop1668 here recommended this particular lightsaber. We modeled this. And that. That looks really, really cool. I, I, I love that we got the bloom to work out the way we wanted to. And I think I'm, I'm just going to call it there. So, yeah. That's so, but before I go, of course, um, if you're watching right now and you're not already subscribed, I definitely would recommend uh, subscribing. You know, if you like content like this, you know, we're just, you know, being goofy with SolidWorks and just hanging out. That's, that's really, uh, you know, that's, that's really what we've got going on here. And uh, of course, if you like to check out some of my other uh, social medias, you, you may have heard Workshop mention my Instagram. You know, come join the family. We've got quite a few members in the uh, in the Instagram family. So the, uh, what I just sent you is my link tree. It's got all all my list here. I have my LinkedIn. You can add me there if you want. Um, and of course, the Discord. You know, can't forget about the Discord. If you haven't already joined the Discord, I would love to see you there. You know, you can share your work, talk with other like-minded individuals, and. Uh, yeah, we've got more than a hundred people in here, so I think it's, you know, totally awesome. And we'd really love if you made it over. So, with that, I'm, we'll call it a night there. So, for those of you who have stuck around, thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.